All right, this is the Winning Cures Everything 2018 NFC South preview. All right, last year, we'll, we'll give you the rundown. Um, it is the New Orleans Saints, the Carolina Panthers, the Atlanta Falcons, and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That is the order that they finished in the division last year. Uh, we'll start off with the Saints. Is that good? Yeah, they won it last year. Let's start with them. Let's start with them. They went 11-5 and last year. They won the division. Their over-under this year is 9.5 wins, and they are plus 150 as the division favorite along with the Atlanta Falcons to win the division this year. Does that surprise you at all? The fact that they're the favorite does not surprise me. Um, in an NFC that's jumbled up and people have – Division winners, not division winners, but Super Bowl winners, playoff teams from all different ranges. This is the team that I have if I was going to pick a representative for the Super Bowl right now for the NFC. And is a you, heavy so, favorite right now for me to say, I think they're going to win it. All right, so you, you've got them way over the 9.5. 14-2. and two. All right, let, let me give the rundown here. Drew Brees has started 15 or 16 games every year since 04. He needs only 1,496 yards to pass Peyton Manning. He should do that quick. It, really within the first, like, six games. Right? Oh, yeah, three three or four games. I mean, he's going to throw 200, 300 yards a game. That's it, yeah. Four games, he'll get that. So, if he does, if he averages 300 a game, he'll get that in, in week five. Um, so, he, he needs to pass Peyton Manning for, all or for the all-time passing record. Mark Ingram and Alvin Kamara. To me, probably the best running back duo in the NFL – they went for over 2,000 yards on the ground last year, and Kamara is just an absolute playmaker. He is fantastic. Um, their their weakness is they were the 16th best rushing defense last year, and even that's not that bad uh, considering how many points they put up and all that. But, uh, but they traded the farm to get defensive end Marcus Davenport from UT San Antonio. I got him going 11-5, and five, and the only reason I've got him 11-5 and five and not better is because at, at some point – you got to get somebody else some reps besides Drew Brees. And I, I don't trust anybody else that's playing quarterback behind him right now. We, I just don't – I don't agree with that in the NFL. I think if you've got it at offensive line, you can play just, for a I, long time. They're going to have one of the best offensive lines in football. Drew Brees is old, man. The eight, they can run the ball. That protects him. Yeah. The a great offensive line, that helps protect him. And an unbelievable just slurry of receivers – that catch the ball. They got guys that go deep, which is dangerous for an older quarterback, but they've got a ton of guys that catch short passes. Kamara's probably one of the most dangerous guys in the world. If he has to drop back two steps and dump it, he can do that in a heartbeat. He's probably one of the second smartest quarterbacks in the NFL right now playing behind Tom. Yeah. Um, nobody's going to out be prepared than him. Um, I think this team is going to be really good. I think Sean Payton is one of the best coaches in the NFL. Do you think They're, the reason the that they traded really good? At the, speaking of that defense, do you think the reason why they traded for Marcus Davenport? They traded next year's first and this year's first and something else uh, to get him. They need a run stuffer. Well, they they need a run stuffer, but it, this is their window, right? Yeah. Oh no, no, this is their window. Drew Brees is on a two year deal. I think that I can see a world in which he wins the Super Bowl this year and he just says, and walks Thanks. away. New Orleans, it's been great. I like it. All right, so we we don't even think it gets close to the over under. I think we're both going well over. No, I'm, I think it's over. And I and I'm like I said, I'm 14. I don't have anybody else with that big of a, a win projection. I, and I don't think. I mean, they close. got some tough road games. Oh man. no, they I, got some tough road games. So I mean, obviously they got to play at Carolina, at Atlanta, and then That's at right. Tampa Bay. But they play at the Giants, and we don't know what they're going to be. They play at Baltimore, at the Vikings, uh, at Dallas. You know, I mean, this is it's a tough schedule, and they host the Steelers. So, you know, it's a tough schedule. I've got them eleven and five. You got them fourteen and two. Uh, we both got them winning the division this year, right? Correct. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. So it's not the, close. Let's talk about the Carolina Panthers. Okay. They went eleven and five in two thousand seventeen. Their over under is uh, is eight. The division. Odds are plus 220 for them to win the division. Look, they were 28th in passing offense in 2017. Uh, Matt Khalil last year helped solidify the offensive line, protected Cam Newton a little bit. Uh, Luke Keekley, that front seven, they had 50 sacks in 2017. Uh, they are going to, like, that helps neutralize the NFC South quarterbacks because, I mean, this is the best quarterback division in the, uh, in the league. 
Christian McCaffrey should take another step forward. Uh, Torrey Smith and DJ Moore. Is that going to help them with wide receiver? Yeah, I, I think DJ Moore is going to come in and immediately take the number one role. I think he's a really good receiver. If it wasn't for my love for Anthony Miller, I, th- I think he could be the best receiver to come out of this draft class. Now, you might be right. And, and he, they he got can, some good receivers I, I, this year. I love, I love Miller. I think Moore went before him. I think Moore is better than him. You think North Turner is, uh, is better than Mike Shula? That's it. That's, that's the game changer here. North Turner is an offensive genius. I, North I think Turner's th- never had a quarterback like Cam Newton because there's never been a quarterback in the NFL like, like Cam, Cam Newton. Newton. Uh, let me tell you what the signing that I like the best. The, they released Jonathan Stewart, who is the all-time leader in, in rushing yards for the franchise. They signed C.J. Anderson. I, I like it. I like what they're doing. He's going to help he, him a little bit. But, but he'll, he'll gonna, be the backup to Christian McCaffrey, They're going to let – North Turner's offense is the one that, that had LT catching the ball out of the backfield a million times. And yeah, and McCaffrey, he will use him no, they, so much. Cam and McCaffrey are going to be super dangerous. Um, that offensive line is not great. Uh, they're probably one of the worst. But when you have a mobile quarterback and a running back that doesn't really run between the tackles, you're, you're not so worried about – your offensive line play. Now you're always worried about it because Cam takes a lot of hits. Um, I, I've got him going ten and six. Got him finishing second in that division. Probably we are, a wild card. We are way off. Way, way off. off. Way off. I say way off. All I've right. got him seven and nine. All right. No. Now look. No. It, let me explain. 2012, they went seven and nine. 2013, they went twelve and four. 2014, seven and eight. Well, seven, eight, and one. 2015, fifteen and one in a Super Bowl loss. 2016, six and ten. Last year, eleven and five. This year is the down year. But I, I want you to listen to these road games, okay? okay? Like they they host Dallas to start off with. Okay. At Atlanta, at the Redskins, at the Eagles, at the Steelers, at the Lions, at the Bucks, at the Browns, at New Orleans. That is their eight road games. I could see a scenario where they literally lose every road game. No chance. Like, I think they'll win at Washington. No chance. But I don't know that I've got them. I don't have them winning another road game. That's crazy. Then you're gonna you're just going to be wrong on them, man. And so, you're going you're gonna to be wrong on them. They, they also play the Giants at home. They play the Bengals at home. They play Baltimore at home. I, they play Seattle. Like, I, I'm telling you, man, that is a rough, rough schedule for them. I don't trust Cam Newton as a pocket passer. But he's not going to be a pocket passer. He's never going to be that. I understand that. But I also think that why it's going to hurt him this year. Why would you want it? It's not. I it, think this is their gonna, down year. We're we're going to disagree. We will disagree. I got him at 7-9. and nine. I got him going under the uh, the 8. Okay. Let's move on to the Atlanta Falcons. 10-6 and six last year. Their over-under this year is 9.5. They are the, the co-division favorites along with the Saints. At plus 150. And all these odds are over at mybookie.ag, by the way. Use promo code WCE50. Get yourself a 50% deposit bonus. Free money is always good. Uh, look, they were the eighth ranked passing offense last year, which surprised me. And they added Calvin Ridley. Um, the offense had the best third down rate in the NFL last year at 45%. This was in the first year of Steve Sarkeesian as offensive coordinator. And I know that we ragged on Sarkeesian last year. But the chemistry should get better with Sark this year, I would think. They added Calvin Ridley at wide receiver. He will be a good number two to Julio Jones. Um, the defense has, has no real exposed units to me. The schedule is a little rough, but, you know, I, I like Atlanta. I, I've got them 11-5, and five, the same as New Orleans, but I got New Orleans winning the division. I got them 6-10. and 10. I think Steve Sarkeesian is fired before the end of the season. Really? I don't think he's a good coordinator. I just don't think he works in the NFL. His crap might work in college. This is where big boys play. I think Julio Jones is going to progressively get worse because he cannot stay healthy and cannot stay on the field. And as much as Calvin Ridley is a playmaker in college, he cannot be the number one in the NFL. DBs are way, way, way more talented. I think that Julio gets better having Calvin Ridley there. It, but if he can't get on the field, it doesn't matter. He's got feet problems, and guys who are explosive with feet problems don't last. Here is their road schedule. All right, they've got a pretty tough one. At Philly, at Pittsburgh, uh, at Washington, at Cleveland, at New Orleans, at Green Bay, at Carolina, at Tampa Bay. That is a rough road schedule. 
That's tough stuff, man. I don't think they're going to win all those games at home either. Uh, let's see. At home, they got Carolina, New Orleans, Cincy, Tampa Bay, the Giants, uh, Dallas, Baltimore, and Arizona. Look at the. I'll tell you this: their schedule is front loaded with home games. That's right. At the back end of the schedule, look, they got one, two, three, four, five, six. Six of their last nine games are on the road. Yep. And and some of them are winnable. Yeah, that's right. I mean, no, they're going Tampa, to Tampa Bay, Bay, Cleveland, yeah. Washington. Yeah, he's um, going to Cleveland now. That's it. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like Cleveland, that's no Cleveland joke. ain't a ain't a gimme anymore. That's not. That's not your mama's Cleveland. That that ain't a gimme anymore. So I've I've got them eleven and five. So um, I got them. I got them six and ten. And I I think Sark is not. I don't think Sark is a good NFL court coordinator coach at all. I think it, like I was. You think another year of him, and I think he can't make it a year. I was shocked that they were the eighth ranked passing offense last year, and that they led the NFL on third down conversions. Like at forty five percent, they converted forty five percent of okay, their third down. But hang on, so you're looking at the a wrong, lot of that's play but, call. No, but you're looking at the wrong stats, though, Gary. This is this is the problem. You know why they had more third downs than teams like the Patriots and the Eagles and the Falcons and or not the, and the Saints and 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 these other teams? It's because those other teams didn't get in third down anymore. They they get they convert on first. They convert on second down. They cover a lot more yardage. They score a lot faster. Sark is still trying to play college ball in the pros. I'm telling you, the difference between him and Kyle Shanahan is not measurable. They were not nearly as explosive last and year, and they're not going to be explosive this year. Yeah, that's I. I still like them. I still like their team. I think they got a lot of talent. Uh, you could be right. So, but we are way off on that. You way got them off. six and ten. And I got them eleven and five. That is that's, right. that's a big difference. All right, let's move on. The Tampa Bay Bucks. Bet we're a lot closer on this team. Probably so. They were five and eleven in two thousand seventeen. They're over under this year is seven and a half. They are the long shot to win the division plus five eighty over at my bookie. If you're gonna uh, if you're gonna set money on fire for that, call me. I'll I'll gladly take that. They, action. they were the hard knocks team last year. They, they the hard knocks curse that everybody talks about uh, led them to a five and eleven record last year. The fourth highest passing offense in 2017. They had Mike Evans and Deshaun Jackson. Like, that surprised me that it was the fourth, right? Like, that's crazy to me well, no, because the numbers look, didn't really look like it. But if you look at their numbers, they went up once Jameis went down. Yeah, Ryan Fitzpatrick. They were, really, they were way better with Fitzpatrick. What did he go, 2-1 and one as a starter? I had a, I had a hot take on, on Jameis Winston a couple of weeks back, and, and I'm going to stand by it. As long as that guy is their quarterback, I got him 2-14 and 14. I don't think they can win games. I know he's going to miss the first four games. First three. Three. Oh, my God. Yeah. Well, in the first three games you are take, at, you, at you New fail, Orleans, you the You fail Eagles, a drug test, and you, and you lose get four. four. You grab some chick by the vagina against her will, you get three. Yeah, it's ridiculous. The, Roger Goodell should just be – never mind. It, uh, so the we, over we live under, in a world where I'll get arrested. The over under time. is seven and a half. They're not coming close. To that. Not coming. I've got them three and thirteen. They're not coming close to three that. three and thirteen. Look, the defense only had twenty two sacks last year. That was the worst in the NFL, even with uh, Gerald McCoy. And Dirk Cutter is a below average coach. He just is. Yeah, he's um, a, he's, a, he's he seems like a decent dude. He's just not a great. They, coach. They drafted Vita Vey to shore up the defensive line. They needed that help. Yeah. Uh, they drafted Ronald Jones at running back. They signed Vinny Curry, defensive end from the Eagles. Like, I like the moves. They made some moves that aren't bad until Jameis is no longer the head of that team. Or, and somebody better than Fitzpatrick's got to run it. Yeah. Then then I'm never going to buy in. I'm just not. As long as he stays their quarterback, I'll continue to bet against them, and I'll continue to make large sums of money off of them. So I've got them 3-13. and 13. You've got them, what, 2-10? Two, two and, two and 14. Or 2-14? and 14? Yep. Golly, 2-14. and 14. Well, that's bad. Their their schedule is ridiculous. Like, well, it's that conference is hard. good. I actually think. I mean, you got to play six games against Atlanta. I think they win one conference game. I don't know where they win it. I mean, I've got it against Atlanta when they're at home. But I mean, that's literally like they'll win one conference game if they win one at all. I, I found it very funny that the only game that they have that is a night game. Every game is literally at at one p.m. Eastern. Yeah. Every one of them. Except well, everybody for, has a Thursday night game. Except for the Monday. They don't have a Thursday night game. I thought the league changed it to where everybody had at least one Thursday. Mm, nope, not yet. Or they, they might be for like future schedules, but okay. not for this year. Um, they have a Monday night football game. Or it's, maybe they either have a Monday night football or a Thursday night. 
Yeah. One or the other. But they play the Steelers at home on Monday, September 24th. That'll be and a that terrible is, game. That is the third um, That's the third game of Jameis' three-game suspension. Why would Why would ESPN pick up that game? I don't know. I mean, you've also got the Redskins and the Saints for a Monday night game. That doesn't make any sense. Well, yeah, but the Saints are always going to be a good draw. That you, so, I wouldn't put I wouldn't put Tampa Bay on a Monday night game at you got, all. You got Carolina and New Orleans on Monday night oh, game. Yeah, any divisional games are good. Um, and the Falcons don't have a single Monday night game. They've got uh, several Thursday games, or a couple. Well, they got two. They got at Philly opening the season. Uh, okay, and they got I was about at to say, New you're Orleans. not supposed to have more than one, but if you're opening the season, it's yeah, different. you got you got at New Orleans. Okay, um, but yeah, so they, no Thursday night games for the Bucks. Uh, although, I mean, nobody really cares about the Thursday night games anywhere. Um, that's a that's our NFC South. I like it. All right, my so super, we both got my the, uh, Super Bowl. I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna go ahead and pick my Super Bowl winner. My Super Bowl winner, New Orleans Saints, is the is in this division. I'm not gonna do that yet, but I, I will say that they will win the division. Way too early to be doing that. But I'm standing <laughs> by it. I like it.